can now go in Azure and choose Windows Server 2012, which has IIS 8. But the server up front says, hey, I cannot do this. Man. You just go, go and fall back to whatever else you can. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the next one here, Better like coming over here and <laughs> see. It. Okay, here, that's better. I'm trying to see what it's using here. Uh, it should fall back to using uh, service and events maybe. Where is this transport? Yeah, it's probably in your header. Where? Yeah, see right here. See that? So it's fallen back, it, it doesn't fall back to say, I'm going to use service and events for uh, Chrome. If this was IE, it would possibly use like for everything. But you get the point, yeah? that's what uh, I'm going on. Now, um, let's see what else uh, here strikes you as awkward. I mean, there is nothing else going on in this application. I mean, it, it looks a little cool when we just have uh, pins on the map, but that's pretty much the class of the application. So maybe 3 application just renders the index.cshtml page, does just a little bit of magic here to get your geolocation, put it on the map, you're putting a push pin on my, my client, and when the server goes out and says, okay, go and give it to everybody, right? Now, uh, you can do more things, uh, which I'm not doing here, which uh, you can actually unsubscribe from the hub. You can actually send a message like this one here is sending it to everybody. But I'm going to show you an example where you can send it to chosen people. Because if you're doing a chat application, you really don't want to listen to what Sam and I are talking on a chat because it's going to be a little dirty. Right? So you, want, <laughs> you want your groups, you want uh, your chosen uh, people to see it. Okay. Um, that's not. Uh, from the demo, I mean, like the PowerPoint side, and you guys can read from here. So here's the like the uh, brain exploring part, right? The server can call anything on the client at any time, right? Which is incredible because you can um, kind of um, fire off a JavaScript method on the client any time a game score changes on the server, right? That, that's the magic of it, and that's the only thing you do because the client and server and the similar jQuery stuff will make sure that you have that constant connection. If it drops, it's going to try to reconnect back up, right? And it's going to automatically choose what works best given your web server and given your client, right? Um, there is no polling. It might fall back doing like log polling, but there's no polling in your code, right? So who cares? Let it, let it pick what it, what it needs. Now, we saw the hub thing. Now, instead of the hub, which is here on the server, um, you are recording, otherwise I could have just gotten a seat next to you guys. So here instead of the hub, I can say, I'm going to use that, use that guy, a persistent connection. So a hub is essentially a wrapper against over that persistent connection. If you need more granular control, like if you need on the server side to know that every time somebody connects, you need an event, every time somebody disconnects, you need an event, or just, just overall more granularity, you want to uh, extend that persistent connection over the hub thing, because it will just give you more events and more event handlers that you can write uh, on your own, right? It just gives you more control. So that, that's your low level thing. Uh, let me back out. What else? Um, the hub is obviously an abstraction, it's easy to use. It's like a uh, um, the wheel and spoke thing. We'll talk about this in just a second. Um, we talked about built-in retry logic. This is something that was kind of giving them some pain um, oops, initially. Because this all sounds very cheesy and it looks kind of flashy when it does work. But anybody with an enterprise application is going to say, hey, I don't have a single web server. I have multiple, right? And if you do not have like sticky sessions, what's the guarantee that your one client is going to keep talking to the same server? Right? You can have load balancing and you might go to a second server and that hub thing, that entire thing, 
unless you take um, extra steps in your application, you can actually, as clients connect to it, every client gets a unique ID to say, this is your unique identifier, you can shove it to a database if you want, because otherwise it's all living in memory, right? And if your hub maintains a client in memory on one server, and then you have the next um, request from the client going to the second server, well, this guy's not going to have any clue as to who that is, right? So they figured this thing out uh, with uh, like Azure type service bus. So between multiple web servers, they actually have, a, and I'm, I'm, I don't know much about their implementation here, but they have an in-memory database thing, which keeps the servers in sync. So even if you have just a hub on in memory on one server, it can keep the same memory across servers. So it doesn't really matter where your client is coming to. Right? So this is a little more advanced stuff, but they actually have this figured out, and it is insanely scalable now with, with web forms. OK, so we'll, we'll get to this in a bit. How about we look at some more fun stuff? We are about with that of course. So tell me what kind of client applications you guys built. Mobile? Anyone mobile? Any kind of mobile? Tablet? Somewhat. Somewhat? <laughs> okay. Document? How about document application? You build document applications all day? WPF, so right. Okay. So let's see how this translates. So what we have here with the SignalR server is just another um, MVC3 application, right? Envision this as your backend application, right? What we are seeing increasingly is if you are building mobile applications, right? you're not going to get the most bang for your buck by sticking to one platform, right? You want to go and hit Windows phones and iOSs and Androids, because that's where the money is, and you want to serve up all platforms. However, even if you have multiple client applications, you want to have one backend, because otherwise it's going to be a nightmare to maintain, right? So ideally, you'd shoot for one backend, and you'll have that either on a web server that's under your desk, or it could be a multiple million dollar scale thing in, in Amazon, right? It doesn't matter. It, it, it depends on the scale of your application and how popular you get. The point is you want to shoot for that one single backend which can do push notifications to all platforms. And now with SignalR, and if it's an ASP.NET backend, then you can do real-time applications. And this can be across the web, the um, desktop, and mobile applications. So that's kind of where we're going with this, right? So this is our SignalR server, which can be hosted as long as you have IIS, this is good to go, right? Again, this doesn't need to be MVC3, it can be MVC4 or 2 or even web forms. So some backend, right? Some, some server side logic that you have. So here, we're actually going to try doing, um, doing chat, right? Chat is always fun. So let's do chat. Here's what we're doing. We are creating a chat hub which is going to be a fundamental object in memory, which is going to keep track of all our clients. Um, and for our client application, we're going to do Windows 8. How, how many of you use Windows 8 today? Like on your dev machines? Like it, hate it? Let's, let's talk about that for a second. What do you guys think about Windows 8 so far? Unstable. Unstable? It does things that I wouldn't expect, and I don't think it's me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm, oh. gonna, I'm gonna wait to hear about all these problems before I try to put the visual studio on. Okay. Well, I'll tell you both sides of the story. Traditionally, uh, Microsoft is known to get things right on the third iteration. Yeah. And if you think about the this is only the first. Yeah. And, and it's the really, even number. Really new, right? It's even number. So, <laughs> um, Build is a conference that they do uh, in. Well, they used to be in Redmond, and then it's in California this year. It's actually next week. Anyone go, going to build? Awesome, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there, and so hit me up if you see me, and you can help me out. So uh, Windows 8.1 is supposed to come out. Uh, Windows 8 was, I felt it was a good first step. And I'm on board with this strategy of not splitting your OS between a mobile and desktop. 
it's trying to cater to too many different audiences. So maybe they will have a boot to desktop, maybe they'll do something special with the start screen and so on. So um, I'm actually running Windows 8 on my dev machine for the last like, year and a half. And Vision Studio, I would say, I mean, it, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't crash any more than what Windows 7 used to do. What I like is on the desktop side of things, like when I'm deving and when I have my multiple monitors, I can see why people are, I mean, it's a change. Like when Windows 95 came out, it, it was a change, right? So that whole start screen, full screen, you can argue that that doesn't possibly work very well with the desktop, but I just don't see it. Like if I go and hit my Windows thing, yeah, maybe. Oh wow, you're not seeing this because <laughs> this is not being replicated here. So I just literally have like two tiles, desktop and like my mail client. Because I don't need to see this, I'm, I'm working. On my Surface, however, I love the touch. It's just born with touch in mind, and it's beautiful, right? So they're trying to evolve, and things are going to get better, but I think it's a step in the right direction. So um, what we're going to try to do is build a Windows 8 client <coughs> that connects to this backend server. Now, what you need to remember is when I say this is all .NET, the only thing that's .NET here is your backend, is your ASP.NET server, right? The client can really be anything. You can connect to this from any type of web client or iOS or Android as well, right? So, and that's the important thing to remember. There's just the .NET part of it is the, the server. This is weird. I do not have my mouse on the start screen. It's just extended here. Anyways, so, so here's my chat hub, and here's my list of clients who are connected. You can persist this any way you want. Could be a list of phones, could be a list of any, anything you want, and you can persist in database. So here, I want to say, I want you to invite you to join a chat room, right? When you do join a chat room, I want to know who you are, right? What device you're using, maybe. Uh, so those are the parameters which the incoming device is going to give me, the server. Once it does uh, try to join me, I'm going to add you to my list and maybe do a little persistence. And then I'm going to say clients. Remember, this is the um, keyword that you get with Signalar um, DLL, the core Signalar DLL. This is a collection of every client that's connected to that hub at that point of time, right? And I'm going to broadcast this to everybody to say, hey, somebody new has joined. Right? Nothing, nothing major, nothing special going on. And then when you leave, I also want you to give, a, uh, give you a method to call so you can say that I'm, I'm leaving the chat room, right? And then this here, push, this is the one that actually does the, like when you, once you're inside the chat room, once you're uh, talking to your, your other folks, this is the method you call to say, I want to say whatever, and it just broadcasts the message over. See so yeah, this is the incoming message, and it just turns around and sends it to everybody, right? Now. <laughs> the comments kind of give it away, but guess what the next clients do? If I say caller, right, instead of saying clients.all, if I say client.caller, guess what that does? Just reaches back to the guy who gave me that request. So if I just want to do something on a client, so I don't know, I mean, if you are a client that's trying to download a song from me as this web server, and if you come and ask me, hey, how much am I done with? I don't want to broadcast that to everybody, then I'll just go back and tell you that you're 60% done, right? So that, that's a good example. When I say things like um, clients.others in a group, which means I'm going to send this message to everybody other than you, so everybody else in the group. And I thought I had the uh, single line here. Oh, it's actually right here. So when you join this chat room, I can go ahead and give Sam and myself that privacy by putting clients in a group like this, right? And you can have any number of identifiers to have uh, a unique client ID in <coughs> your group, right? <coughs> it's all about you managing your list of clients. Keep them all separate, target them one by one. You can actually say here, um, instead of doing this, uh, let's see if I can. Because what I'm trying to get to is you can actually refer to individual clients by their ID, by their unique ID. Um, and the syntax is escaping me. 
something like this, where I mean, if you know the unique ID of the client, you can refer to him by name. All right. What are we trying to do with this, right? So let's let's find this up. And you notice that I really don't have much here in my view. Uh, you're going to come back and see this home and the index view. I'm actually going to take you to this chat view, right? So let's pull this thing up. This is the chat view. And we'll do control F5 so you can see the ASP.NET dev server. Oh, we have an error. Okay, that's bad. What happened? I see. Wait, let's start at views home. It's probably just home. Okay. Slash home slash. So how about we start here? Not with the complaint. There you go. So this is my index.csh table, right? And I'm just saying, hey, you need to go somewhere else. So when I say home slash chat, that's where you're going to this chat view, right? So this is that this is this view here, the chat.csh table. So what's going on in this chat.csh.html? little bigger. Here's my chat room. You have a text input area. And same thing, same magic goes on here. I'm referring to the jQuery signaler and signaler slash hubs. And I'm trying to connect to this thing called signaler chat hub, which has to be defined on the server, and it's this guy here. See, it's called the chat hub. So I'm trying to refer to this chat hub already. Right? And I have a simple method called add chat message, which is going to broadcast it to everybody. And it's just going to append that chat message to the web client that you're on right now. And if I say broadcast.click, which is really this guy, when I say click, I also want to take what you typed in in that message box and do the same push message to clients. This guy, if you remember, is on the server, right? And this guy sends it to everybody. Okay, with me so far? So here's the web side of things, and let's let's stop there, and we'll actually see this in action, hopefully. Uh, this is getting hard. Does it hurt you if I'm here? Nope. You can still see. Okay. Yep. This is so yep. much better. Okay. But now I cannot type. Uh, Move the notebook down there too. Uh, I don't know if the um, extender is going to work that Some deep? Yes. Would it be better if you just turn the podium to the side so you can see the screen and Maybe. that side of the room? Technology. Don't sweat it too much. I mean, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm well enough. Okay. Oh, you want to give me extra keyboard here? Cool. Hey G, hmm. maybe if you just let him turn the podium, oh, like or, this. yeah, quicker, yeah. another way. Oh. Yeah, this should do. Yeah, I can just stand on the other side. Yeah. Okay, cool. perfect. Yeah. I can see the screen. Yeah, much better. Okay, so what are we doing here? All right, I cannot move. I'm going to be stable here. This is a Windows 8 app, right? So how am I doing this? If I just do file, new, and actually let me show you both. Um, project. How many of you use Visual Studio 2012 now? Yeah. 2013 is coming out, so this, this thing is pretty darn stable. Um, and and it it's, has a few speed improvements, so I mean now I don't want to go back to Visual Studio 2010. This just looks better. If you can live with the all caps thing, and if you cannot, there's actually a NuGet package that will turn it back down to uh, uh, lowercase. But I don't, I don't sweat it. I don't mind it at all. So here's where I'm picking Windows Store apps for C Sharp XAML. Um, how many of you do Windows 8 development or kind of dabble into it? If you know what what it I is. I dabble. So uh, what they're giving you is really choice, right? You can develop a Windows 8 app in a lot of different technologies, and see now we are really digressing, but it's fun, right? So let me show you stuff from my book, which is sad because I have to go to my book to show you stuff. Um, <laughs> maybe here. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> so it's 
some extending. This monitor is on this side. Okay. You guys seen this before? Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop here. You guys seen this diagram before? Yeah. This is what's going on in, in Windows 8, and this is what takes a little bit of magic to pull, pull, pull off, right? So this blue side is your Windows 7. Nothing has changed, right? So um, if your managers or bosses get freaked out that, oh, my Silverlight apps, my .NET apps, my WPF apps are not going to run, it's not true. Everything that's here on the blue side runs exactly the way it is today. Right? You're going to get performance improvements if you switch to Windows 8. And um, your IT admins can make sure that the users do not see a whole lot of that. Well, we're not Microsoft, right? So we can say using Metro yet. So you can not see the Metro interface as much as you want. So this is existing, right? What's changed here is the green side. And there is, what they don't tell you is this is a, like a wall of China, right? Things don't talk between the two sides, and it's by design. You don't want them to talk. This is brand new, and it's really this part that took them the most effort to um, uh, pull out. On top of what's the Windows kernel services, this is your, um, C++ core, this is your Win32 and COM APIs, which you have to do. But like, if you had to write a Windows 7 application, which reached into your webcam and gave you a live feed, it's just this much amount of code, and it's not fun to write. Right? So they wanted you to have it a little easier. That's where that uh, WinRP layer comes in. This is your built-in layer on top of the Windows kernel services, right? And it gives you access to the internal Windows services through wrapped up APIs which are just easier to use, right? Am I, am I saying these things that, which are things you have heard a million times before or making a little sense? Okay, so what's really nice about this is the effort they put in to invite all types of developers, right? So, <coughs> of course, Docker is in the work because I mean, that's what Windows, uh, that's the bread and butter. But what they also wanted to do was to give you some choice here. What we are dealing with is this stack in WPF apps or Silverlight or Windows Phone apps, this is our comfort zone. This is all your managed code. It's okay, so here's the fun story. This came out in 2011, build where they first announced it, and they actually didn't have this guy here. The people freaked out. <laughs> where is .NET? Where, what's happening here? What what is it running on? It's 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 running on .NET. There's nothing else going on here. So this is our favorite stack, obviously, as .NET developers. Um, how many of you do XAML? XAML is awesome. It's super powerful. It's very, very simple. Um, if you do like uh, Android development, you are looking at kind of a backdated XAML. It, it's XML that you're looking at. But XAML is beautiful because it's uh, supported on Silverlight, Windows Phone, Windows 8, WPF, maybe even Xbox after next week. Who knows? But you, how many of you are gamers? Yeah, some of you? Okay, so Xbox ones. 